All right, the time being 6 o'clock, we'll go ahead and bring this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Most. Here. Healy. Here. Swenson. Here. Kettering. Here. Flemish. Here. This time, are there any uh, uh, additions or corrections to the agenda? No. Entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. All right, Gary, did you have, did you want to take a moment? Uh, yeah, just uh, last Friday, uh, Governor Nome declared uh, on the 29th Vietnam Veterans Day, and uh, it's been that way, but she declared it. Uh, got something, I have several of these, but I've got one. Families lost a lot of a lot of good people. So, uh, just wanted to leave that out there for just a little bit. All right. Uh, well, we appreciate uh, certainly our veterans, uh, both uh, Mr. Swenson and uh, Mr. Kettering, both uh, Vietnam era veterans, and uh, appreciate your service. So, you thank too, you Dan. Much. Well, yeah, me too. But. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the March 19th, 2019 commission meetings. Meeting. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Yes. Okay. Um, on page six, and I don't have it pulled up in front of me. Um, it talks about me reading for from Bob Chop and John Yagi. I think we need to add in there that I read from Joe Healy as well. So just to, to make that note. And then also when we voted on the planning commission, um, it's not noted in there that Joe joined via telephone and when he joined and when he left. And I think that's important to put in there because he wasn't technically at the meeting, but he did join for that. So if we could add that, that's it. And that was 19129Z around that time. That was the only thing I saw. Are there any other additions or corrections to the minutes? Entertain a motion. To, with, the, with changes? Yes, with changes. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passed. Next item on the agenda: public comment. Uh, some did you do the conflict of interest? Oh no, we I did not. That. I'll grab oh, the yeah. At this time, do any of the commissioners have a reason to abstain uh, for a, either a financial or non-financial conflict of interest? No. 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 Okay. Next item on the agenda: public comment. Thank you. I did miss that one. Welcome, sir. We'll give you three minutes. And could you state your name uh, and where I'm you're from, shop. sir? Thank you. I live on uh, 437. Uh, east of Dakota Plains Elevator, and the culvert under my driveway is 80 years old, and I fell into it with the pickup, and it just caved in. I was wondering if the county would furnish the tube for it, and I would have somebody put the install it for me. Okay. 
do we do culverts for personal driveways? I'd, I'd to get some specifics on that and get back to you. Okay. And I think that's not going to be an uncommon issue, and that's something that will be discussed because I'm sure you won't be the only person yeah. requesting. Been, so, the, you know, at this time, I don't think we can give you an answer, yes or no. Yeah, not tonight. This was the culvert to your approach? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I saw it on my way to town this morning. I saw your red flags on the way to town this morning. I saw the hole. Uh, that was the wall, telephone locator there. Is he I the only one for public? Post and yellow mm -hmm. washing tape wrapped around that. Yeah. I know where you live. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm straight north, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so my... Did you see the, up by the blacktop? Uh, what up? What what? On the Tabor Road. Yeah. How bad it is. The so place that's. With a big feed wagon. I'll have There's to check that out. Up there. Okay. The, I thought I'd just let you know. Thank you. Have, you might go, go check that out. Level it off. All right. Then I know I talked with Bob Wall. Instead of maybe putting a metal culvert in, he said he'd got the double walled plastic culverts, mm -hmm. if that would work. Okay. So, mm -hmm. we can look into that. Huh? I said we could look into that, yes. Yeah, you don't look into that. That's okay. all I wanted okay. to see. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Leonard. You want my cell phone number? Uh, yeah, I'll write it down. Go ahead. 661. Oh, you're not going to do that. Four, two, four, eight. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks, Leonard. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, Leonard. You. Next person on public comment was Robert Frang. I'll give you three minutes, sir. Robert Frang, four four eight seven seven three zero fifth Street. And we have a little pro well. There's a lot of problems <laughs> there where the water went over the road, but I've noticed. I can see from my upstairs room, it's about three quarters of a mile away, and now the water's gone down enough that where Clay Creek comes down, it has busted out a couple places, so there's chunks of the bank that are missing, mm -hmm. and that releases it, and that is going to further endanger our road there on 305th Street. And I didn't know where, you know, who to talk to about it. And uh, just wanted to make it you know, sure. so that uh, okay. you know when they were doing, and I would imagine that would need to be put on for whoever's going to have to fix it. It'll okay. probably have to be done privately, but whatever has to be okay. fixed, it should be done. Keep records of it for the uh, mm -hmm. payment and such. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Did you call that into 211? We're asking uh, no. if you could do that, that would be a huge help for us. If call it in and it'll get uh, annotated, all damage we're asking goes to the 211 hotline. And you'd really be helping the, the okay. county and Mike and everybody out. Yeah. We'd appreciate that. Okay. Thank south, you. For south of 305? It's where the right through 305. Okay. And the breakout is north of 305, I would say maybe a couple hundred yards north. Okay. okay. And there may be two of them. I can see the one is pretty big. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda, update on flooding. With everything going on, we figured we would uh, just update on what we are doing. And Paul, did you want to update the community? Um, go ahead, get up here and introduce yourself and tell us all the great things you've been doing to help the citizens of Yankton. Great. I'm Paul Schurz, like I'm the emergency manager for the county. I ask you guys to uh, please shut off your cell phones. Thank you. Uh, as you see, uh, District 3, I guess the big thing is, but we just handed out your little bit over the maps. Uh, you can see at the top of the page the link. Um, uh, if you go to that website, you can actually see this map, and it gets updated daily or hourly, depending on how much we push the District 3 to get a foot up. Uh, working with the gentleman that does it with District 3, I'm actually texting him at night, and he's updating him in the evening hours or whatever it takes over the weekend stuff like to try to keep this current so we're, we're trying to get everybody especially the emergency services going where they got to go um, okay. currently we are trying to work the, through the recovery side of it even though the disaster technically is over as far as an emergency response let me put it that way 
Uh, we have uh, been working with FEMA. Uh, when I say FEMA, the state folks in, in Pierre, uh, I sent a letter out to all the townships, towns, uh, and Mike, you have to probably checked the email because you're gone, I told you. Uh, we're looking for some numbers by the 15th of April. Uh, currently, we've got four townships that have sent some, three townships that have sent some stuff in. Uh, I've got some preliminary stuff for Mike. Uh, two of the REAs, Bottom Electric, Clay Union Electric, uh, they fall within our county to, to claim stuff if we go into a federal disaster. We're running around about $374,000 just on that little bit that we got in. Uh, I gave you, I don't know, Patty, I gave you that copy. I, I didn't make copies for you. Right? She, she, she got so us some. So you can see right here, yeah, 354, I, I misquoted there, but that's just, I have still got a full load of stuff that has to go okay. on there yet. But we're working with the townships, the cities to make sure, uh, as I told you the last meeting, we did have the meetings with these folks mm -hmm. uh, to talk how to fill out the forms. Uh, we've been feeling, feeling calls, taking calls, Still recommend that everybody calls 211. If you have uh, property damage, if you see a road is bad, they're taking the information. Uh, I want to emphasize, though, we are not in a we do not have a presidential declaration. There is no federal funding at this time. We're hoping it goes that way, but right now there is not. I mean, we're trying to we're trying to do what we can to get the numbers up there. The county has made it, but it's the state has to make the threshold, mm -hmm. and then they have to ask FEMA. One of the big questions, and I, I have to say this, as I get asked, is how come Nebraska's got it and we aren't? Well, unfortunately, driving to Nebraska, they've got a disaster. We've got a little oops. I mean, it yeah. to be that way. Yep. In all yep. honesty, that's the way it is. Yep. They are bad down there. I went down over the weekend and visited some people I know, and mm -hmm. you just cannot believe down by Spencer mm -hmm. where that dam went out. The devastation. The farms that are wiped out. Stuff that nature. And don't get me wrong. We've got problems here. Mm -hmm. But it's... It, the governor's mm -hmm. down there and the president or the vice president sure. made that declaration quick because mm -hmm. you could see it. So we're in the process of getting all that information and trying to get it really good. Okay. Uh, but again, if you have damage, whether it's personal property, your home, uh, I had a gentleman call today, the septic system fell in uh, because of it, you know, you need to report it because if you're not on the document from the 211 and the questions they ask are from the individual assistance format that you would be asked from FEMA if that time came. Mm -hmm. So we're using this, the right, we're using the format, they're asking yeah. the question. So when they ask you something, please give them the information they're asking for, because you need to be on this docket. If you're not, and, the, and when the, the declaration is approved, and they close the event, you're not on it, you're, not, mm -hmm. you're out. I mean, mm -hmm. And that's 30 days when they close it, and we'll make sure everybody knows that. But well, just mm -hmm. please get on it. I mean, right now okay. we have 59 people, individuals, that are having some form sure. of basements collapse, septic systems. Uh, you name it, houses. I asked, got asked today if there are any FEMA trailers for people to move into. You know, no, wow. I mean, we don't have any, mm. but that's kind of where we're at right now. Okay. Trying to gather the data. Is, yeah, uh, the city is still allowing uh, people in the county to take their flood yes. damage. To, and so if you want to announce how that works okay. to everybody. If you have, if you have uh, flood damage, uh, you know, carpets, stuff of that nature, if you want to take it to the city's oh. land to their town, you need to just tell them that you're from Yankton County. You can show them your address. The people out there will take it. They'll weigh it, and then they'll they bill us back to the county. They won't charge you for that mm -hmm. damage. But we want to make sure that it's or mm -hmm. they'll know whether it's flood damage or you're cleaning out your garage for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are willing to take that for that. We looked at putting dumpsters out in the county, but we were afraid the stuff would go all over the place. Mm -hmm. We'd end up with a bigger mess than we would if we just did it this way. So that is available it's still in right. existing. Thank you. I had asked you about farmers yep. and losses with that, and you said go ahead and call 211. And I didn't know if that was relayed very well. Oftentimes we just think of homeowners and basements, but. We've actually put a couple of releases out, and actually, if you go to my emergency management mm -hmm. website, there is, as an ag side of it, of what you need okay. to do for FEMA. All right. I, mean, I, I never thought to bring them, but I, we have copies. A few of them run off at the office. If you want to stop by, pick them up. We're glad to share it, but you can get there, download, mm -hmm. see what uh, you can do, and there's also Thank links you. to get assistance through different state programs or federal programs. Great. That's all on there. Is that for like animal loss and loss animal of hay loss and things of and uh, grain and grain things like that? Okay. Up, uh, yep. I know that's happened. It yep. It's animal and okay. grain. Okay. Talks about it all. Down. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other commissioners have anything for Paul they'd like to ask? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Mike, you want to kind of go over what uh, 
you're seeing out in the county for flood just real quick or do you want to do that later kind of give us the situation on the roads and what you've seen with the flooding so still out there uh, trying to repair stuff mm -hmm. as much as we can with the load limits being on and stuff we're mm -hmm. following that also because the roads are not in good shape right now um gravel roads and stuff we're trying to haul some clay and get some base back built up that is not there anymore for hauling gravel and stuff uh, i guess be careful out there mm -hmm. stuff is still showing up culverts are still collapsing we got crews out there, one crew out there right now uh, replacing pipes. So just be careful, keep your eyes open. It, and that has been a challenge is our gravel roads are so soft right now. If we even haul trucks on them right now, we do more damage to fix the spot you want fixed Perfect. than if we wait a few weeks to let it dry out even more. Yeah. My roads, when I live on a gravel road, and I can't go north because it's closed because there is no road left. And coming south, there are so so many soft spots that I have to slow down in a jeep just to get through them. So that's just part of Mother Nature, and we're doing the best we can. Well, it's like the soft spots on the gravels. That numerous Mike? calls on people wanting us to come to repair them all. Mike, turn the microphone a little closer. Thank you. Switches. No idea. Just talk louder. Talk louder so they can hear you. Um, people wanting us to uh, repair the soft spots in the road. Well, it's mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, you know, your average vehicle, you know, weighs you know 3,500 to 5,000 pounds. You know, and, and it feels like a sponge with with your car or pickup. You put a You, you put uh, a 35, 40,000 pound motor grader on that or a, a load of gravel or, or clay, you know, that, or crushed rock, whatever it be, you're, you're going to make it way worse. You're just going to keep pumping that mud up to the top and then you're really not going to be able to make it. A few roads we've taken the skid loader out just to shave off some of the humps, but well, then it's not a good thing either because then that one person might not realize what we just did and they drive in it and then they get stuck. So. Okay. And uh, please don't move barricades. I, Mike and I drove around on Friday. A lot of barricades are being moved and people are trying to go around them. Please don't do that for your own personal safety. Yeah, on that note, if a road closed sign is up and you don't see water across the road, it doesn't mean that it's open. Road closed is, is road closed. Right. So. The biggest thing is keep your eyes peeled out there because stuff is still showing up and I'm afraid it's going to show up all summer. I, I talked to my insurance man and he said that if you do drive on a closed road, your insurance is no good. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, item number eight, claims. Entertain a motion on claims. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Next item on the agenda, March payroll. March payroll. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Next item on the agenda, item number nine, plats. Uh, it's Brian. Are you going to take, are you just going to prove these plats? Just okay. through. All right. First track is, uh, Joe, you want to read the lead, legal description on this one? No. No. Let me get it pulled up. Uh, Matheson Platt. Okay. Platt of Matheson, track six in the northeast quarter of the northeast quarter of section six, township 93 north, range 56 west of the 5th uh, Meridian, Yankton County, South Dakota. Um, 
we've got a Mr. Matheson um, has a, a section that's platted out. There's a track six has been preliminary, preliminarily plotted and um, looking for approval to, to uh, plat track six. Is he here? Is Mr. Matheson here? I don't believe so. Okay. And this was reviewed um, prior to uh, I think some of the signature block was changed on it. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? You know, it, it's mm -hmm. just been cleaned up since it's last time we reviewed it. Okay. Any questions by any of the commissioners on this plat? No. Entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve uh, Matheson Plat 6. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion. Roll call vote, please. Healy? Yes. Swenson? Yes. Wolf? Yes. Kettering? Yes. Flemish? Yes. All right, it's the next one, preliminary track six. What's that? What's that? Just approve it? Oh, you, we already approved it, both of them? Okay. No, no. That was approved? We just did six. What? Okay, we did a roll call and it was approved. Okay. So, go on to the next item. Okay, next item on the agenda, item number 10. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, next item on the agenda, Matheson track four and five. That's what you were saying. So we approved six, now we're on track four and five. So I'd entertain a motion on plat four and five of the Math Matheson track. So moved. Second. Motion and a second, further discussion. Roll call vote, please. Healy? Yes. Lowe's? Yes. Swenson? Yes. Kettering? Yes. Clemens? Yes, motion pass. Next item on the agenda is item number 10, discussion of Stone Church Road Bridge and Fleegs Bridge, Old Highway 50. So this time, is there anybody who'd like to make a public comment on uh, Stone Church Bridge and Old Highway 50 Bridge? Now would be the time. Please come up, Bam. Uh, we'll give you three minutes. Uh, please state your name, where you're from. My name is Jackie Vaith. I live at 43105 Stone Church Road. Um, I didn't have anything planned because I wasn't planning on coming up here, but obviously from my address, you can tell that I live right beside the bridge. We use that bridge daily. And I'm also here on behalf of Menno Ambulance. I'm an EMT with Menno. We need to get to the other side of that bridge. It's very important. If there's an ambulance call tonight, it's going to take us half an hour at least to get around to any portion of the people that we serve on that side of the river. Um, I guess I just want you to think about it. If it's your mom or dad having a heart attack, do you want us to be, the, be able to get there in eight minutes or are you okay with a 30 minute delay and then another 30 minutes to get to the hospital? Um, obviously, for personal reasons, I definitely want that bridge open because my husband and I also own a trucking company and right now he can't even go to work with nothing in his truck. Um, but the ambulance and the fire department is a bigger concern for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else care to speak on this topic? Now would be the time to do so. Come on up, sir. Please state your name, where you're from. Daryl Meloff, um, Mayor, City of Menno. Um, the bridge, very important that uh, we would get clear passage uh, through uh, that side of Yankton County into Hutchinson County for many things. Um, part of the Menno Fire District is uh, on the other side of the river. The ambulance district is on the other side of the river. We also have a school district on that side of the river. So if we cut off the access um, in any way, um, it, it hampers um, many different things from, from mutual aid, um, 
from Lesterville coming our way to help us, from us helping Lesterville in any fire or situation or anything that would happen within a district. It also hampers commerce in, in, in both directions. Um, Yankton can always benefit from any commerce that would come that, that way, and so can the city of Menno. So it would be important uh, uh, to keep that open as it is now. I know there was a new deck put on there or, or resurfacing, um, and the end result was lowering the the load limit then of the bridge at the next inspection. Um, not sure how that ended up that way, but at any rate, even a school bus cannot cross that bridge with a load of children on it because of the, the load limit that there is. So um, we encourage you to, to look at this and, and give it as much attention as, as possible so that uh, we can uh, have smooth commerce uh, both north and south to you and, and to us. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else care to make a public comment on this? Did you want to speak, Jody? Yes. On my letter that I wrote. Yeah, I have it. All the commissioners have a copy up here. Uh, I don't know if you wanted me to read that. To the come on up. Come on up. Please state your name for the record okay. and where you're from, please. I'm Jody Clute, and I live at 43127 Northwest Jim River Road. So obviously the bridge is a major concern to me too. I had written a letter to Dan and the commission um, about a week ago and Dan called and we appreciated the time that he spent with my husband and I on the phone. And then he suggested that we try to get some neighbors together and we did. And on Sunday we had 32 people at our farm and a lot of them are here <laughs> and, that, and we appreciate that. That bridge is, is a very important part of, of our community. The people that were in attendance that day on Sunday feel that the Stone Church Bridge should be first to be repaired. Safety issues are a vital factor when fire and ambulance are needed. It is a hardship for area farmers who own and farm land on both sides of the river when moving equipment to and from fields, which we do. We own land on both sides and we pay taxes in Yankton County on both sides. And for us to go around is 12 miles one way with a tractor and with equipment. And there's others that are in the same boat. It's not just us. Area trucking companies, like Jackie Bates said, they have excessive miles added to each trip due to the bridge that is unable to, unusable due to the weight limitations. With the new load limit on the bridge, it is questioned as to whether or not the school bus, our school bus, can even go across that Stone Church Bridge. Without a legal load bridge, it seems Yankton County is expecting Hutchison and Bonhomme counties to bear the burden of excessive wear and tear on their roads and bridges. That's irresponsible. That is irresponsible of Yankton County. And is that being a good steward? Is that how we want to treat our neighbors? Is to have them take care of our problems? It seems like if we're going to be paying taxes in this county, then the roads for this county should be taken care of by the county taxes. They shouldn't be put off to Hutchison County or to Bonham County. We feel the taxpayers on that side of the county feel that we've been very patient in the past years. Our tax dollars certainly have not been used for road or bridge repair in our area. The bridge repair that was done was a grant. It was not out of the general fund. Including the two million dollars that was set aside for Stone Church Bridge and two years ago was used in the Yankton area. So that was two million dollars that was supposed to go to our bridge and didn't. It is our understanding that people would need to travel approximately three miles to cross over on Highway 50 instead of using the old Highway 50 bridge, Fleegs Bridge, three miles while utilizing Yankton County roads while they're doing that. Not Hutchison County, not Bonham County, but Yankton County roads. It seems it would be a nice convenience for you to fix Fleegs Bridge a nice convenience. It's not a convenience for us. That's not the, the point of this. Repairing the Stone Church Bridge is a necessity. It's not a convenience, so we're asking you to please make it a priority 
and to vote yes and do the Stone Church Bridge first. It's needed. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Jody. Anyone else care to make a comment? I don't think we have any speakers in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else care to make a comment? Now would be the time to do so. Welcome, sir. Please introduce yourself. Tell Hello. us where you're from. I'm Brian Gearing, uh, 29368 431 Avenue. I live approximately a mile from the bridge. Um, my wife, children, we all go to Menno every day school, my wife works there, children in school. So when, right now we're going through Maxwell, which that's gonna to come to an end, which that makes our trip from a seven and a half mile to a 14 mile trip one way. And that road's coming to an end real quick. We can't take it with a car anymore, so now we gotta to go to Scotland. So now instead of the seven and a half mile trip one way, now we're to 22. So, and that's one way and that's once a day. So. You can understand our hardship. I appreciate the commission looking at us and, and listening to us. I appreciate your time coming out, Joe and, and Dan, for listening to our concerns and what we need. And, and we need it for the commerce, too. You know, just for me to get fertilizer and everything, the crop inputs that I need, it's a daily task. Feed, um, it works both ways. I know a lot of grain. More will it be going to Lesterville for Lesterville Feed and Grain, which Jeff is here tonight. Appreciate him too. Uh, and it just, it can't get there. It, you're talking moving more miles constantly for every trip. So I know we have water issues with their bridge, and uh, but that's a short term deal. You know, that water will be off that road pretty soon and it'll be open again versus losing it longer and for what for more years you know how many more years before they say that bridge ain't fixable or we're gonna close that we don't want to see that we need that Hutchinson County spent a lot of dollars fixing road coming down that way um, so obviously they're looking at it as a long-term investment too and I wish you guys would look at it as a long-term investment for commerce and the good of, of Yankton County uh, for everyone Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on this matter? Now would be the time to do so. Going once, going twice. All right, I'll turn it back to the commission. Uh, like Jody said, uh, she sent me an email and I uh, got a hold of her and, and called her back and we had a, a pretty good conversation. Initially, uh, my thoughts were on Fleegs Bridge because of the the road traffic, but uh, getting out uh, in Odessa Township where we went and uh, got to meet so many of the citizens of Yankton County, and and uh, really I think this bridge has a profound effect on the individuals in Odessa Township, and I think uh, we we can't minimize that, and so. Uh, it's my opinion, and I don't know what Joe, Joe's is, is I, I would really like to prioritize Stone Church Bridge if we are gonna replace one of these. And, and to, to me, after talking with the individuals in that community, I, I think that uh, has to be at the top. I think we are holding up uh, Clark Engineering, I think is asking for an answer where, right, and have been. When do you need that answer by? We just need it by July 1st. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think they've asked for it several times, and I think we need to, I think we have the information um, <coughs> that we need, and we have at it. And um, just just looking at um, the bridge rating, the, the routes that, the alternate routes um, that the people in that community have to take, um, looking at say Fleegs Bridge. Um, I think there's a, a way we can have Fleegs Bridge open to legal loads and prolong uh, that route while we replace um, 
replace Stone Church Bridge, I guess. So if, if we're going to prioritize one of the four, that would be my my vote, I guess. I concur. Gary, Don? Yeah, I would have to agree with you, too, that Stone Church Bridge is definitely a priority. I know. I just, I was just out to the, the fleet, the old Highway 50 bridge today, and took some pictures, and um, it, it actually looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. It has washed over by the train trestle, but uh, um, it hasn't changed too much from the yeah. previous pictures I've had. And I think it's important that we, you know, let the community know. By no means does this mean we're going to let Fleeg slip, but I think Stone Church has to be the priority because I don't know how long that one's going to be around. And, and so, Don, did you have anything you'd like to add in on? Well, on I'd this? like to fix all four. Yeah. But it Second. Happen. Yeah, yeah, I realize and, that. Uh, the, there isn't any money even to fix one at the present time that I know of. So, uh, who are we fooling? Uh, we're fooling ourselves, and you know, and I, I waste some time not finding an alternative solution that works. I, there's there's some merit to what you're saying, Don. I think, um, I mean, it is difficult. Nobody wants to close any bridges. Why um, would you? Right. Um, if you look at that that area. I don't see a good alternative route, I guess. And, and maybe we look at it more, but um, if, if we're picking, you know, if we were to pick today, I would say um, we would move forward with that and, and look towards. I can assure you that there are as many or more farmers that farm on both sides of the river on the use Fliggs Bridge as they do Stone Church Bridge. That argument, you know, we we got to fix them both. We we got to have right. them both. Uh, I agree. I'm not against Stone Church Bridge. Sure. Right. Yeah. I, 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 if you're you. all in favor with it, I'll vote to to go along with that. But I think I think we're fooling ourselves by not forming a way to get the bridges repaired, and that's. Through taxes, and we probably need to and have that discussion at some time. And it coincides probably, with probably Rome. when you make the decision to, to do the bridge because it makes a difference which one you're going to do. Right. It does. Um. And it goes to the larger picture. I mean, we have. I hate to say this catastrophe is an opportunity, um, but it is in the way we look at how we do our bridges and our roads and how we prioritize. Um, we've certainly recognized where we have a lot of openness to future damage. Um, and I think as a community, we need to have this discussion, not just on bridges, but on roads as well. We have, we have paved roads that are just crumbling at this point. And so we are faced with, where are we going to put the few dollars we have? Because in reality, we might get nothing from FEMA. And if we do, it'll be maybe five years down the road. So we have to look at today and how we prioritize where we're putting our dollars. And taxes, increasing taxes has got to be part of that equation. And I'll say it, politicians aren't supposed to say that in front of the public, but it's a very real discussion we are faced with having. And if we're going to do that to you, we have to make sure we're putting the money where you want it put. And we can't be selfish about making those decisions. We have to be realistic. And you have to look at the county as if we are starting all over where would we put our good roads? Which bridge would we prioritize first? And it's going to be a long discussion. And the reason we're starting with bridges is because we have a deadline on that. Um, and tomorrow morning, I'm meeting with Mike to try and start figuring out how best are we going to put the few dollars we have to get the roads in a condition where we can all live for a couple of years and figure out where those long-term dollars are going to go. But before we raise any taxes, we need to have a real plan 
and we need to have a sunset to that plan to hold us accountable. And at the end of that sunset, if you believe we have done good with your dollars, at that point we can ask to renew it if we feel it's necessary. But, but this all goes into a, a, a big conversation and it's not going to be welcomed by anyone. But it is an opportunity. I hate to say it, it is an opportunity for us to have a real conversation. And that, that is the commissioners going out to the townships in that area, putting a map down and saying, if you can only have 50% of the paved rows you have today, which ones? And that's where we start. And, it, and it's, more, it's that and more than that because we have to, we have to sell this project to the, the people in the southern part because whether we want to do it or not, the votes are in the southern part. So we have to convince them that that's the thing to do, that's the appropriate action to take. And we have to, we, and yes, there's agreed. a lot agreed. of work to do. Very Absolutely true. Very, agree, very Don. true. I agree. Absolutely. And, I'm, and, and, all, and also this hinges on what our cost share is with the bridge improvement grant. Um, for those of you who don't know, we, we actually just got several hundred thousand dollars in preservation awards but that's not the same thing as a replacement award. And we will not be able to do this unless we get a probably an 80-20 split by the state. Um, if we get a 60-40, a probably not gonna happen. So. The good thing is, instead of just eight million, they put 15 million in that fund. So hopefully down the road, they see the value, how they're helping the counties mm -hmm. and how we're using those dollars. So. Um, we're certainly not going to answer everything tonight, but I do believe of the four big bridges that we have across the James that Stone Church should be the first one. If we set that in four years or five years and we put away 200000 every year and by the time we get there we've got our 20% to pay for it. Um, but, but that's something that we have to convince you to believe in us to get done. And that's a big job. It is. And I uh, Gary's got something. Maybe Patty can help me. Uh, like the Fleet Old 50 Bridge, are there f money, is there money for the other three bridges in a fund, like the one that Fleet, or is Fleet all the way, is that the only one? There's no money for any of them. Is there, how much money is left for the, in the Fleet Bridge Fund? There was. 100,000. 100,000. And that was after that million was taken out and given to the city. Correct. So we got a hundred thousand, and that's it. We, def I, yeah, we I, have I, difficult choices ahead, you know, yeah. and that's just dollars are, are going to be tough to come by. Um, there's going to be difficult choices made, and uh, we need to get as creative as we can. I was on the phone with uh, South Dakota DOT for quite a while today, looking at options for um, keeping some of these bridges. Uh, opened up to legal loads for a longer period of time, single lane bridges, things of that nature. Um, but I think it's our responsibility to um, to take care of our citizens in our county and the people that live in that area. Um, they they deserve to have decent routes for um, medical services and emergency services, and just just like anybody else in the county. And and it's going to be tough, but. I think I think we need to really put teeth to this and, and see okay. what we can come up with. Do you want to put on the agenda for next meeting a, a vote on this, on prioritizing bridges for the next meeting? Because we yeah, just have discussion on there now, so we'll put that for the next meeting. Anything else from the commissioners? All right, we'll move on to the next, next item on the agenda, Yankton County Roads and Bridges, uh, Kent Mettler. Kent Mettler, I live in Odessa Township, Yankton County, up by the Stone Church Bridge. Uh, first, I wrote this out so smoother. First, thank you, commissioners. I can only imagine how you can hold these positions and have everyone happy with the decisions you render. Even if we don't all agree, at the end of the day, thank you for doing your best. And 
when we were sitting back there now, I had a smile because I was reminded when my kids were growing up, they said that I repeated myself. So to try not to do that, I wrote this out, and I'm going to find that I'm repeating myself based off whatever, what has been said. So I'll go through it real quick. Uh, we're here to, to present information to the commission as it applies to the Stone Church Bridge. Uh, for the sake of time and clarity, we're going to refer to the Stone Church Bridge as the bridge uh, unless we identify a different structure. We feel there is a broad public need for the bridge because of its location and use for time and safety both now and in the future. Uh, the needs and uses we present today are not limited to the businesses which we reference. Uh, the mayor was here, I didn't know he was gonna be here. Uh, he referred to the mental fire department. Uh, just to give you a benchmark, the fire trucks weigh between 30 and 35,000 pounds. That classification of vehicle on the Stone Church Bridge or the bridge is limited to 22,000 pounds because it's a single vehicle. So you're limited to 22,000 pounds and the fire trucks are weighing from 30 to 35,000 so they're between 8 and 13,000 pounds overweight to cross the bridge as it is today. And uh, that, that's an obstacle for them because of the fire responsibilities they have on both sides of the bridges in and south of the bridge. Uh, another example that I wanted to use um, was I, I talked to Lesterville Feed and Grain, Jeff's here. He's noticed a substantial reduction in, in revenue to Yankton County and to his business. It's quite a few years ago when that br bridge first was lowered in weight and it's continually gotten less over the years to the point that it's impacting him as a business. Uh, I wanted to reference Tabor Lumber. They use it to come up with fuel and propane and agronomy. Uh, Meltler Fertilizer uses it to go south across the bridge. Uh, I checked with them and I'm sure Tabor Lumber's is, is similar. The weights on their sprayers, on their self-propelled sprayers will run around 28,000 pounds. So with the classification the bridge has, they're at least 6,000 pounds overweight. The floaters, which are the bigger ones, weigh from 31 to 35,000, which puts them 9,000 to 13,000 pounds over the weight restriction to the bridge, which means they have to go around. Uh, it was eluded, eluded to earlier, the truckers have difficulty. We can't cross that bridge, and I truck too with uh, the classification that we fall under, we're limited 26,000 pounds. I can't cross that bridge empty with our trucks. Same thing with livestock, live bottom trailers, all these are having difficulty because of that. That pretty much sums up what, we ha what I had. Uh, I wanna introduce Dr. Crossweight, who is the uh, superintendent of mental public school this comes under the bridge and the road aspect of the discussion in what they're dealing with on the roads for the school. Dr. Crossfield. Thank you. Well, today I have a cold, so <clears throat> bear with me. Um, just to give you some ideas of some things that we're dealing with, our students... Could uh, you say oh, your name one more? Charlene Crossweight, Dr. Crossweight. So the Stone Church Bridge has a limit of 22,000 pounds. One of our buses is 19,800 pounds. That's without students on it. So we know that we have 27 students that could possibly ride on that route. So if I did just an average of 100 pounds, you know, 2,700 pounds, um, that's 22,500. It's too much weight for our kids to be on the bus. So that's a safety issue. Now, normally, our kids ride on that route 41 miles round trip in the morning and at night. But with the situation that we have now, they ride 18 additional miles on each route. So, and due to, as you've alluded to many of the roads tonight, you know, gravel roads, um, blacktop roads are breaking up. So our bus drivers need to drive um, more slowly. So a lot of these kids are on a bus for an hour and a half in the morning and an hour and a half at night. That's a long time. So um, with that, I would just like to encourage you, and I do understand you have for more 
bridges that have issues and roads and all of the above, but I would like to encourage you to look at the Stone Church Bridge. Also, is there a possibility of a grant for this? And that's just one more piece, and you know what? We're willing to help on that grant piece if, if you would allow us to do that or need us to do that. But we know that we're dealing with the safety of definitely kids, and obviously they're our number one priority, and families as well. So um, thank you very much for listening to us tonight, and, and please feel free to call. I'm more than happy to um, answer any questions if there's other questions that, that I can't answer, and if I can't, I'll find out. So any questions for us tonight? Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Kent. Yep. All right, uh, we are gonna go to item number 13 before item 12 and talk about bridges with Clark Engineering. So, item number 13, are they here? I just saw Adam step out. There you go. You're hiding on us. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I've got too many papers. Discussion. That was a uh, very, very well informed discussion. I've seen a lot of bad public hearings, and that was done really well by everybody. Really impressive. Uh, my name is Kevin Goff. I'm with Clark Engineering. We did the uh, bridge inspections in 2018. I have with me Adam Polly, who did the actual bridge inspections, and Josh Prather, who was working with him on that as well. Um, we're going to talk about. What do I hit? Thank you. Um, we're going to expand it. We've been talking about four bridges for a long time. We're going to start talking about 40 bridges. This will be all of the county bridges, our county road bridges. Uh, in other words, not the township bridges. So it's about half of your system. And uh, this will include the four Jim River bridges, but we won't be talking about them in any detail. Um, things get better when we talked about the four bridges. Um, two of them were two of those that you see under sufficiency rating that were in poor condition. Um, there they are. That's those two. So things are getting a lot better. Of the other 38 bridges, we have seven of them in fair condition and 31 of them in what we would call good condition. That sufficiency rating is, uh, is a rating that's the Federal Highways Program. We do all of our information from the bridge inspection, enter that into a program, and it produces this sufficiency rating. It takes into, con into consideration the, the structural characteristics, like the condition of the bridge, but also the amount of traffic. There's more traffic. It's rated heavier. So there's a lot of things that go into that. Can I interrupt you for one yes, second? Yes, sir. Can I get the camera to focus on the screen? I think we've had that request in the past during these presentations. <coughs> go ahead, sorry. No, that's fine. Um, so we're gonna go through these 40, 36 bridges. Not, we're, gonna, we're not gonna go through 36 bridges. We're gonna go through the fair bridges uh, the seven bridges that are fair, the two bridges that are poor, and then there are an additional 10 bridges that are posted, and we're going to take a look at those as well. And that's not, that's not, I didn't do my math right, there's an additional six bridges that are posted. We're, we're going to show you in a total of 14 bridges. 15, 15 bridges. We took the four James River bridges out of it, since we've already touched on those. Okay. Um, and Adam's going to go through those, similar to what we did for the, for the Jim River bridges, but a little quicker because we're going through more of them. If you have any questions, jump in. All right, the first one is uh, 68070158. We're located 2.8 miles south of Utica, sufficiency rating of 30.6. We're going to go through these in order of their sufficiency rating. Okay. 
So worst being the first, and then so on. And here's the two, two uh, pictures that we, we always take of every bridge, the profile and the alignment. You can see some uh, cracking on the back walls, um, map cracking with efflorescence is that white stuff that comes through the deck. Um, that's a picture of the underside of the deck. We got some minor section loss to the top flange of the girders, which is typical throughout. And that is why this bridge is posted currently. Recommendations for this, the structure is nearing the end of its useful life and should be programmed for replacement. And then we got our, our more typical safety, general safety items, upgrade the bridge railing and install approach guardrail. And this one is currently posted at 1729, single unit 17 tons, combination 29 tons. And uh, we're recommending that it continue to be posted at that. Say that again. Single unit 17 tons and the combinations 29 tons. We're recommending to continue that posting. Okay, thank you. Questions on that one? The next one is 137088, built in 1930, located 2.8 miles south and 10.3 miles west of Irene. Sufficiency built in 1930, we got our monies out of that. Yeah. <laughs> Sufficiency rating of 43.3. <coughs> Again, the two, the two pictures. <coughs> Underside of the deck shows they, they were painted, and I think there was a new deck put on this recently. And there was some repair work to the abutments. You can see under, under the repair work on that picture on the right, there's, you can see the actual condition of the, of the abutment. And the repair work to the other abutment. This one is currently posted at 11.18, and we're gonna continue that posting as well. Questions? <coughs> Next one is 68-180-133, built in 1941, 1 1.7 miles north and 5 west of Vollen. Sufficiency rating of 45.8. Our two typical pictures. And then the picture on the left, heavy efflorescence and stalactites. This is on both edges of the deck. Um, this is the reason why this, this bridge is pro posted. Um, we, we obviously have a lot of cracking and a lot of water going through that deck, creating those efflorescence and stalactites. We also have eff efflorescence on the abutments. Are those corrosive then to the, the metal, those uh, stalactites? Are the, is that corrosive or, or, or is it just uh it's, it's a chemical reaction of okay. the water going through the concrete. Does it corrode the metal, or, or is it just the concrete the, basically dissolving? Or? Yeah, it's the concrete. Okay. So the water corrodes the rebar as it goes through the deck. Okay. The water's doing a number on the, the rebar at the same time it's doing a number on the deck, so yeah, there is definitely corrosion issues. That we okay, can't see. thank you. And so here's, calcium and lime in that. Right. Yeah. Here's more efflorescence buildup on the, the vents, the supports for the deck. This one's currently posted at single unit 18, combination is 30, which is 75% of legal loads due to those um, heavy efflorescence buildup and stalactites. And we're recommending that that posting continue. Next one, 140.015. This one was also built in 1930. When they built these, what what was the life expectancy in 1930 when they built it? How? If I had to guess, maybe 50 years, somewhere we're, around there. We're pushing almost double that. And sometimes on these older bridges, we, we don't have really good records of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they were first entered into this federal highway database, they kind of took a guess at it. So you'll see a lot of 1930s, a lot of 1935s. They took their best guess. So it could actually be older. It than could that. be. Okay. Sufficiency rating of 47. Our two uh, typical pictures. 
showing the underside of the, the deck and the girders and the uh, north back wall. You, it's hard to tell on this one, but it's, it's deteriorating. South back wall is along the same lines. Current way limit is 2033, and we're going to continue to post at that current weight restriction. Next one is 043023, built in 1975, 6.7 north and 2.3 east of Lesterville, sufficiency rating of 55.8. profile picture and alignment picture. And then I'll direct your attention to the right picture, the typical deterioration of piles at the ground line. Those are timber piles, and you can see that uh, um, <coughs> decay of the timber piles. And you can also note that they're adjacent piles. And then some undermining of the north end due to high water at one point. So when they're adjacent like that, that means you know, you have two of them and the, the, it has to span even further, correct? Correct, yep. This one is currently not posted and uh, due to those, due to that decay of the adjacent timber piles, we're recommending that it be posted at single unit 18 tons, combinations 30, which is 75% of leak loads. It is posted. Right, and Mike just said it is posted now. This, this was from our inspections last year and Mike has already put these signs out there so <coughs> next one is zero two four zero zero eight uh, you can see it was built in 1950 and then I have a slash of 97 that means uh, some type of rehab work was done in 1997 this one's located 18 or excuse me 8.2 north and 0.4 east of Lesterville, sufficiency rating of 56.3. And this structure is one of the two that we talked about previously that we are replacing with pipe culverts. So this one will be constructed this summer. See the current weight restriction. And our recommendation there is just to complete that replacement this this year and that's one of those the cheaper alternatives that we can look at doing on these smaller structures is looking at getting those pipes in there so you'd be in the fifty seventy five thousand dollar range to replace that you think that's kind of right somewhere in that range versus three hundred thousand dollars for a small bridge Next one is 200-016, built in 1940, 1.6 south of center point. Sufficiency rating of 57.1. Again, we show the underside of the deck and girders. This one is currently posted at 2440, and we're recommending the posting be 2136, so we're reducing the posting um, a little bit. And that one is, Mike just said that one has been changed also. The next one is 209-030, built in 1940. 3 north and 3.1 west of Irene, sufficiency rating of 60. So we're getting into these, what we would consider in the good condition, that 60 to 100 range for sufficiency rating, but they're still posted, so we're talking about them here. See the underside of the deck, and we have deterioration on the north end of the east back wall. Currently posted at single unit 20, combination 34, and we're recommending to continue that posting. Is that due to design or deterioration? Uh, design, the capacity of the steel girders. Mm -hmm. 
The next one is 230-159, built in 1974. We're one south of Allen, sufficiency rating of 61.2. This one is uh, a couple miles north of a bridge that was just replaced, was that last year? That's like a half a mile. Half a mile north? A quarter mile. Of one that was... Mike says it's in the plan to get replaced this year. And I'm showing a picture of pile one of abutment one and pile three of abutment one. Notice they're not adjacent, not as bad, but still not good. So uh, if you could go back a second from on your expert opinion, how, how long do we have on a piece of wood like that before it's, it's done for? Before it fails? Well, before it fails, yeah. Uh, Five, ten years. And how old is this bridge? Uh, built in 1974. And you never know, you, you could get a, a flood and a piece of ice or something hits that pile too. It, it could be next year. It could have happened. It could have happened. could have happened this month. Is there a preservation option versus replacement option on these wood pilings? Um, not a very, no. There's not. There's really no preserving these timber piles. We used what to. about the bridge, though, in general? I mean, it's so the only other thing we could do is lift. These are, these are deck units. So it's one big girder deck piece that you put in. Um, we could lift those deck units off and re replace, replace the timber abutments. Um, we talked about that, but on this one, if you stand on that bridge, as traffic goes across, there's quite a bit of bouncing going on almost like it's spanning too long already. So we were, we were thinking a replacement would be better here. But these deck units could be salvaged and try to use them in an emergency um, situation somewhere else too. It's possible. We'll better look at that. If, if you were to replace this bridge built in 74, would you replace it with the wooden pilot? No. No, we don't use timber anymore. You don't use timber anymore. It's either steel or concrete. And, and most of the bridges are steel or concrete in the, in the country or state? Or? Uh, so the newer, the new replacements, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was just curious because when I go out and I, I take pictures of the fleet, the old 50 bridge, I look over and I see the train bridge. And one day there was a train coming by with loaded uh, cars. Each, each car holds about three and a half semi loads, and there were six semis or six trains on that bridge. That's about 18 semi loads on there at the same time, plus an engine. I was just curious how come that wooden bridge is so much stronger than a concrete? There could just curious. There could be more timber. They're using more piles, uh, beefier pile caps on top of the timber. I mean, 18 semis, that's a lot of weight. It is. If you look at the timbers on those, they're huge compared to what normally got used in, in these type of vehicles. They also aren't uh, subject to federal highways laws. The, the railroad it came before the government, it seems, sometimes. They, they don't have to listen to the federal government about how they design their bridges. Yeah, just curious. They, they operate on a little different, different, different model. Yeah. They don't build timber bridges anymore either, though. There, there's no timber bridges being built in that industry. <clears throat> are most of our bridges like this have have timber than most of the older ones? Or? Most most of the older ones. Okay. This one's currently posted at twenty one thirty six, and we're recommending that continue until it's replaced. And I'm sure it has been changed. Uh, the reason this one's twenty one thirty six again, these were not adjacent piles. There was one between the two bad piles. The other one went down to seventy five percent because they were adjacent piles. Next one is 050159, 2.8 south and 2 west of Utica. Sufficiency rating of 65.5. When you look at these now, the sufficiency ratings are getting up into the 60s. We're getting to what we would have considered a good bridge. These are good bridges. They just, the, the structural capacity of the bridges results in them being posted. That's, that's why we're showing. So you're not going to see a lot of pictures on these because there's not a lot of stuff wrong with them. <coughs> uh, 
underside of the deck, current posting, single unit 19, combination 32. And we're recommending to continue that posting. Next one is 070113. This is one of the two bridges that we received, or the county received a preservation grant on. Built in 1956, we're 1 1.7 north of Utica, sufficiency rating of 68.5. Again, a nice, a long structure, expensive structure. We're trying to preserve the life of this. And that picture on the left, uh, once we're done with the preservation project, we're putting that polymer deck seal on, the black stuff on top of the deck. This will be repaired. Current weight restriction is single unit 21, combination 36, which is 90% of legal loads. That's the one we got the bridge improvement grant yes. for? This is one of those examples that that's a tough decision. Uh, this, this bridge is in really, really good shape and can last a really, really long time. But it's at 90% of legal loads. So it, it may be something, I think as you move forward in a plan and you get some of these bigger things taken care of in 20 years, this may be something you circle back to and do something about. But at this point, you got, you got bigger fish to fry than this one. So we want to make sure this one's out 25 years, no problem. Next one is 019015, 7.5 north and 0.1 west of Lesterville, sufficiency rating of 71. Our two pictures. You can see underside of the deck has some deterioration. The, the picture on the right, this deck was widened, and that's a poor construction joint that you're seeing there on the right. Again, we got the efflorescence leaking through the deck and section loss to the top flanges of the girders, typical throughout. This one's currently posted single unit 19, combinations 32. And we're recommending to continue that posting. Next one is 043014. 7.6 north and 2.3 east of Lesterville. Sufficiency rating of 73.2. This bridge um, is currently in the design stages through the DOT. This is on the old STIP, the State Transportation Improvement Plan. Before the big, this it was the STIP. So this one we have sent preliminary design and preliminary plans into the DOT and we're awaiting their comment. We're optimistic that this will get built in 2020. So in other words, this bridge is already funded and that funding would be 80-20. I believe this one is just to the east of Stone Church on Jim River Road. You can see the deterioration. Current re weight restriction of single unit 19, combination 32. Recommending to continue that. And you can see at the top there, the structure is programmed for replacement in 2020. So I would, uh, I would guess that we would be going out to bids um, late this year or early next year. <coughs> Definitely want to be thinking about that at budget time, budgeting for that 20%. Yeah. And about what is 20%? You were going to ask that. You know, <laughs> 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 that was the um, you remember the cost estimate? I don't. It's a single span. Um, I would guess three quarters of a million dollars for a cost estimate for that. For the total? For the total. Okay. Not, not I was your, say, not the 20%, that sure. right, seems sorry. pretty generous. Okay. We'll get that number to Mike. And he can let you oh, know that's that. fine. Appreciate a premium this year. The bridge <laughs> guys are busy. <laughs> <laughs> they just went to. They are busy. Next structure is 061022. 10.8 north and 0.8 west of Utica. Sufficiency rating is 75.2. Uh, 
Uh, you can see cracking on the south end of the west back wall. Showing you a picture of the underside. Current weight restrictions, single unit 20, combinations 34. And we're recommending to continue to post that at 2034. That was a 1940s bridge. They don't make them like they used to. That's, that's incredible light. Hmm. Next one is 050105. Built in 1963. Two west and 2.5 north of Utica. Sufficiency rating of 89. 100 is as good as it gets. That's, that's a higher beat. You can see a little poor consolidation of one of the columns that was due to uh, construction. Weren't vibrating the concrete enough down there. Current weight restriction, single unit 21, combination 36, which is 90% of legal loads. <coughs> and we're, look, we're recommending to continue that posting. And then this is the last one. This one is not posted. I wanted to put it on here because this is the second preservation grant that Yankton County was awarded. Built in 1996, three west, 4.5 north of Vallon. Sufficiency rating, almost 100. And again, we're looking at prolonging the life. We're looking to seal up that deck so the water doesn't come through and create that efflorescence and stalactites. Mike, is that the one that had those uh, baskets blow apart, or is that? No, that's no, just from that's a different one. 301 and 448 okay. South. And that is that epoxy deck seal that we were talking about. <laughs> that's all the bridges for today. Questions? So, Adam, how quickly do uh, the uh, ones in the 640 to 60 classification drop into the Condition. How fast do they? Yeah. I mean, how many of them are out there waiting that will be two years or three years from now will be on that list? Yeah, that's a good question. The, the timber ones that you see that were up there in the high 50s and 60s, those are going to come down faster where we're, where we're seeing that timber deterioration. Some, some of those could be a while. Those, those concrete ones with the concrete abutments aren't terrible. Those will deteriorate slower. There are also three additional bridges in the 60s that are not posted that are going to start drifting down into that fair and towards poor. Um, so if that's a good point you bring up because they're coming, and we've got to get the other ones out of the way. So when you know in 20 years, with some of these plans we're talking about to get through some of these, more are going to come. But we got to keep them, keep them moving. And this is based on your inspection from the summer, and we still don't know what the flooding did to any of these, and so. Keep that in mind as well. Uh, there's possible, I'm sure, erosion, other damages that could have taken place. So this is based on last summer. Correct. It's inevitable that you're going to have some scour issues that Mike's going to have to deal with. Okay. <coughs> Once the water gets down, you can see it. Sure. So these bridges are county bridges. Do they include the county responsibility in the township bridges, the ones that are long enough the county is responsible for, it, are those included here? No, these are just the bridges are, that are, are long are enough for county responsibility on county roads, both on, paved and gravel. On just county just roads? Just county roads, yep. And does that include the secondary roads where the county is responsible for the township? That will be their next presentation. Okay, so all township, th so this is just county. This is just on oh, county system. Be 40 okay. more bridges that we will evaluate and the, the numbers will probably, that good, fair, poor condition that I showed you earlier, probably maybe shift a little bit more towards the, the fair, poor um, from the good. Again, the tough priorities on the lower volume roads, what do we do with them? And mm -hmm. So more so tough decisions coming. So you mentioned the one bridge would be in three quarter of a million and, and we pay 80%, or they pay 80, we pay 20. And if that would happen with all of them, could that be expected? Hope for it, 80-20? Um, you could hope for it, <laughs> but like it, again, this was on the old, the old system. It wasn't a competitive grant process. Yeah. So 
Like, like and, Sherry said, there's $15 million that goes towards that 80, or if it's the new program, it could be 50-50 or 60-40 or something. But the point I want to get at is if you take 750 or maybe 500,000 times 10 bridges, that's $5 million bucks. doesn't include the four Jim River bridges. So you throw them in, we got close to 15 to $20 million of bridges that have to be repaired. Or replaced in the next ten years, with a or more following up. Repaired, replaced, or closed. or closed. Closure, closure. It has to be an option at some point, now especially on these lower volume roads. Off topic, back to the Jim River bridges. If I remember right, we have twenty years for those. Is that I think so. Because I think we talked about one one every five years for the next twenty years. So we, I just doubled your time frame, Don. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, kind of time to figure it out. Well, I, I think if you remember in, in the no, I don't. <laughs> I ain't living that long. <laughs> in those previous yeah. conversations, we'll take a look at that next group, and, and we we'll, we didn't really throw a lot of prioritization at you. We just kind of stuck with those. We'll work with Mike as we come in with that township and kind of let you see those three different categories of bridges. And we'll take a crack at kind of taking those three lists and shoving them together a little bit. And then that's when it's really going to get interesting. It's picking between two Jim River bridges is hard, but picking between a, a county bridge that's, that's posted and we want to get rid of that, but uh, we could do three of these other smaller bridges someplace else. Those are going to be interesting choices for you guys coming. It's a choice that all of us as a community are going to have to make together. I'm glad there's so many people here tonight, and you can see this isn't a county commission problem or a problem in one of the townships. This is something that we're all going to have to deal with together. So, eye opening. Excuse me, Ed? Yes, sir. I'd just like to ask. If you're going to, yeah, you could speak. Come on up, and uh, so we can get you on the record, Kurt. Uh, introduce yourself where you're from please yeah Kurt Olmer I actually live in Hutchinson County but we we farm the ground right next to that stone church bridge so we're quite involved down there um, those ratings you have on these bridges that's considering like two 36 ton trucks passing on that bridge at the same time is that correct um, if a bridge is posted there's, there's, for there's a lot of different loading combinations that we do and I, I don't want to try to explain that for everybody we'd be happy to visit with you and explain that to you afterwards I don't, I'm not trying to dodge the question but yes it would take into account that so would that be an option to open that to single lane traffic you know if we need to have a bridge carry a legal load and we would operate that as a single lane bridge wouldn't that ex serve the needs for quite some time we haven't evaluated that. There's a lot of different things uh, where the truck is on the bridge and how the trucks move through, and it's not always two bridges at the perfect spot. One of the things that happens, if you think about it, you have a truck in one lane, you have a truck in the other lane. There's different girders underneath them that are catching that load and carrying it. So, okay. so that can make an impact, what you're saying, and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, that, that's something we could evaluate. So that, that you're referring to like a right-hand lane, left-hand lane, yeah. so you've got that load spread across the face of that bridge yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, but, you, usually, two trucks back-to-back -back don't make as much difference. One's kind of in the, the bad spot and one's not in the bad spot on the bridge. They can't both be in the same spot at the critical spot at the same time. The trucks space out, so it, it makes a difference. Hopefully, I'm not being too confusing. Sorry. Just, just. You know, I'm still a farm boy, so kind of. Uh, a lot of good knowledge comes out of that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Any questions for Clark? Questions from the audience? All right, well, we pre did you have something? I was just going to say the map was very helpful. Thank yes. you for having me. Thank you for doing that. Do you mind if we post this on our website? No. Get the information, information out there. Yeah. We'll try to post this on the website so you guys can. Uh, you guys are looking for interesting reading, 
right here. And then when are you going to come back to do the other 40 bridges? A uh, couple, couple weeks. So a couple weeks, uh, we're going to go uh, into even more depth on other bridges. So you're all welcome to come back. So. Say depth and depth. Day, uh, depth. So thank you. All right, next item on the agenda, item number 12, damaged road by Utica. <laughs> Mike. Welcome. Well, as we all know, uh, it's time of year for low limits and... Uh, hold, hold on a second. Uh, yeah. All right, go ahead, Mike. I was saying, as, as we all know, it's uh, that time of year where low limits are on, <coughs> frost is coming out of the ground. Uh, it's very important to follow the low limits. Oh, hold on a second. Hey, guys in the hallway, uh, could you close the doors, please? Yeah, that's fine. I just want to make sure everybody can hear what's that, what's that. Go ahead, Mike. Anyways, uh, it's very important that uh, people obey the low limits. Uh, it's very critical to our roads, uh, as you can see in that handout. Uh, Utica Road between uh, Joe's substation and Utica. There's so many blowouts on that road. It's Our plan this year was to patch it. And... Uh, as of now, the, way, the condition it's in, that is no longer going to be. Um, nobody wants to see their asphalt roads turn back to gravel, and that one this year will be. Will it be a permanent fix? I can't say. I'll just have to see how the money is in the future, you know, to turn it back. Uh, I did come up with some figures to fix that road. Uh, Like in the future, well, like this year, if we uh, haul six inches of gravel on it and uh, mill it, you're talking 35,000 a mile just to do that. How many so, miles is that? That is five miles. So what's your total for that? Did you total it up? I, yeah, 35 times five. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, so to haul six inches of gravel and mill it, I, I feel that'd be the best way to do it, to get build the base back up, because as you can see there's a base issue there with all the blowouts. Then, uh, talking with the contractor, it recommends four inches of asphalt. You know, if we were to put it back to asphalt road, we're talking uh, 330,000 a mile for four inches of asphalt. Is that after the milling, or is that the That's after, process? yep, the milling is all by itself, 35,000 a mile, 330,000 a mile for four inches of asphalt. And then uh, figure, you know, that's the county doing it. I figure roughly 15,000 in fuel and, and labor per mile. So you add all that up, that comes to 380,000 per mile times five miles, that's $1.9 million. And that does not include any culverts, culvert replacements, you know, and if your guy's gonna, if a guy's gonna stick that kind of money into a road, you wanna do it right, and I think the best option would be to replace all the pipes. You said 1.9 million? 1.9. Million. million. Mike, uh, any particular reason why that road west of Utica fell apart so quick? Trucks hauling. I've seen it. Over overloaded trucks. Uh, how, how can you say or not? I guess I don't. I, I would assume, but I don't know that. This picture stood out to me. That it, is that the westbound lane. Yep. Okay. And the, it's kind of disappointing, you know. Uh, people on that road were concerned, you know, about it, and. The trucks kept hauling and kept going and kept going, and they seen what was going on. And but 
it, it's too late. So, Eric, is there anything you could do about something like that? I mean, well, if research that gets specifics and uh, talk to carrier enforcement, get back to you. Okay. Yeah, because one time the uh, sheriff's department, one of the deputies said that the sheriff's department doesn't enforce, you know, no through trucks or or overweight. That's a state. That's a higher patrol that does that. And and he had said to call the highway patrol because they have the scales and sometimes in their truck in the trunk of their car and yeah. and they have to also they can bring I think I think he said something about if they're like three miles by a scale they can pull them over but I'm not don't quote me on that but uh, the sheriff's department doesn't right force any of that so yeah but I think just yeah it's very critical to especially when driving down a gravel road in your your car pickup and you can feel it start pulling left or right you know with that frost coming out you know just think what a, a loaded semi is going to do so your recommendation for this road is to grind it I mean it's not it's not, not repairable. right right now it, it's the condition it's in it's instead of uh, our original plan this year was to haul six inches of gravel on 448 north of 46 and mill it I recommend we do not do that and put that on this five miles west of Utica. What what road? How bad a shape is this road compared to other ones? Is it the is it the worst at this point? Second worst? I mean, what's your prioritization on? I this would road? say it's 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 one of the worst ones. Uh, the three miles north of Irene is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed you just gave us the alternative for four inches of asphalt. Not thinking the chip seal. I'm saying to to carry a, if being it's close, it's it's a grain area, you know where where they haul a lot of it's grain and ag, agriculture stuff. I would recommend, especially with the elevator right there. Yesterday I was up on 444, 297 that goes east. That's really broke up too, isn't it? Yep. And that's been bad, but it's really bad now. And, 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 and 444 north of Mayfield Store was horrible driving yesterday. Mm -hmm. I know uh, there's a few mental people here yet, but like south of uh, Menno, that's what they did a couple of years ago. They uh, milled it up, and then I don't know, do you, you guys recall what they put on there for mix? It was four or six inches. I don't know. Six. six. Two three inch mats. That's a nice road. Yeah. Hmm. Sherry, did you want to uh, speak on this? Or I know you emailed me. Come on up and introduce yourself. Thank you. My name is Sherry Hoffman. I'm the mayor of Utica. First of all, I have to say that Mike and his crew were outstanding during the flood. So. My hat's off to them. They were, <laughs> by far, they came to us several times because we have serious problems. So I, I'm not happy to hear this. I understand it is a bad road. My parents live on that road, so I'm, I see it every day and I understand it. My concern would be if I have to have fire protection, which is Lesterville, now they have to go a different route to me. Is that time chewed up somehow? I get we don't have almost two million dollars to fix a road I get it guys but it's it's really disheartening because I hear conversations about who is the culprit and it's unfortunate that there's nothing that we can do about it in that I can think of at this point um, but yeah when I see and hear trucks at 5 a.m. in the morning and 11 o'clock at night I have to wonder what they're doing because, and especially when they're Jake breaking through my town, or dynamic breaking, excuse me, I need to use the lingo there, sorry about that, dynamic breaking through town. So that really is a giveaway. The farmers, they're fine. They're not doing it on purpose. That's their road too, but it's disheartening. It really is. And that would be my concern. So that's all. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And again, thank you, Mike. And you're perfect. You need to so you're, Mike, uh, you're saying that we'll grind this up, that's your recommendation? Grind it up, turn it back to gravel? 
I would say for now that that's our best option and we can see what happens in the future, you know. Certainly. Are you going to grind it up and, and leave it for a year and get the soft spots worked out and then put the overlay on it? I'd check out the culverts, make sure, because before a guy would put any kind of a surface on it, I want to make sure the pipes are good. I think at this point gravel is going to be better. Than I, was like, I drove this the other day, and if we put six inches of gravel on it, and uh, left it in the condition that 303 is in today, 303 east of Walshtown, it's a 10 times better road than, than it is now. It's dangerous right now. And, and I was sad to see on 301 that you just had paved the, how bad that's breaking up already too. Yeah, uh, there's, I, I did a lot of driving yesterday. I think there's two spots on there. You know what, I'm not saying 301 that the process on that is not a bad process, it's just you know, we fixed 12 to 14 inches. We didn't fix what's underneath that, you know, so stuff will still show up. It's just, it's I'm inevitable, you know. Do you think maybe they need to set for two years instead of one? Probably wouldn't be a bad thing, you know, just like this year it would, but you know, the other, it, it's what do you do? Because yeah. next year it might happen in a different spot. It's just. I think it'd be, you know, since this is, I think sitting at Lutton for two years might be a better option and we can identify those weak areas right. because it makes no sense putting in money and especially if you're talking about putting over a mat. It makes no sense doing that if we're, it's just going to blow out in a year or two at, what would you say, $320,000 a, a mile? Well, three eighty if you if, if you include everything. Anything else from any of the commissioners? On this one? one thing I asked: don't don't grind up the Wellstone Road <laughs> from the towers to Mayfield Store. <laughs> so. I watched that being paved when I was a kid, and people always ask, "Well, how come that road holds together so well?" My dad told me that when they when they asphalted that in about '55 or '56, they never disturbed the old roadbed. Them old timers are smart enough to remember that. All they did was bring some up to the sides, made it a little wider, and that had been packed, my dad said, for 30, 40 years. And that's why that road stays together. Yeah. So. All righty. Thanks, Mike. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Next item on the agenda, Planning and Development District 3, Rural Addressing. Did you guys get that email? Yep. Find it. Uh, it was in the packet. Okay, it was in the packet. Uh, so basically, uh, discussing with planning and development district is. is it? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, with speaking with planning and development district three, uh, they in the past worked for rural addressing for Yankton County, and up until I believe two years ago, they quit doing it and uh, they would like to take it on again for the county absolutely free of charge my thought is anything we can get for free uh, i spoke with uh, both paul shershlick and uh, and also the sheriff's department they're both in agreement uh, with us doing that so i guess does any of the commissioners have any i suppose we need a motion to approve, approve well that. i i have a question yep who physically ensures the signs get delivered and installed? The owner. The property owner. Property owner. Mm -hmm. So what happens when Joe Blow doesn't show up? Paul has a building full of signs. Okay, so, you know, and that's a problem. I think mm -hmm. we have a building full of signs. Something, something in our chain of command is getting missed or... My recommendation Paul. is what, what talking with... Uh, uh, Paul and talking with uh, uh, Greg was that uh, part of the process of getting a building permit is to check the box that you've picked up that sign and so okay. they're not being left so that would probably have to we'd have to probably modify the so uh, who's doing that who's modifying right. the building permit well, to make sure that that gets done I guess a conversation I'd with Pat um, mm -hmm. a few months ago regarding this and uh, the debate at that time was I think Paul felt that 
they're coming to this building to get the building permits anyway. He should, you know, maybe that office should carry the signs and that should be part of the process. I, I don't think anything's been done since. Um, I know the sheriff was involved in those conversations and um, it's something that needs to be looked at. We need to figure out how to make that work, I guess. Right. And it probably should be part of the, the building permit. Here's your permit and your sign. If you put it up, it's up to you, I guess. But yeah, I don't think we have to force. You know, we have the ability to force people to put it up. But I think it's going to have to be discussion between the planning and zoning office and and the emergency management system. Okay, who's going to take care of making that conversation happen? I will at the appropriate time. Okay. I guess when I just I just don't want. Should, yeah. Look, you know, right. we we've identified an issue. We've right. got lots of signs, so we need to. Yep. put it to bed and yep. make the problem go away. So do we want to approve that we're going to do that then? Or or do we want yeah. to do it at the next meeting? Or? I think if you what you want it stipulated should be in here. I don't think you should approve this until you have that okay. stipulated. Yep, yep. I think so it's just part of that cradle to grave, okay. if you right. will. So and I don't know. Do we need a, a vote or anything to have um, District 3 start doing this? I don't know. what Because they I were doing so. it. I don't know if there was a vote to move that or not I this is what or district three this is what district three wanted this memorandum agreement if okay. you want to take point on this Joe uh, and bring get change what you want to see on this and bring it back to us as a board and then okay. we'll approve it yeah I think it preferably at the next meeting so if you could do yeah. that for then okay thank you everybody in agreement with that all righty well that's done Next item on the agenda, item number 15, health insurance. Commissioner Lost. Are you okay? You want to take a break or keep getting pushing through? I'm good. Any, Everybody else good? Anybody need to take a few minute Maybe. break or keep on keeping on? Keep on. All right. Keeping on. Moving All on. All right. Um, had a chance to, to meet with uh, Julie Auk and uh, Patty sat in on it and Karen did as well. Uh, I just had nitpicky questions probably for her and she was very patient and answered them um i had a question on the preventative care um standard policies for ppo normally cover a preventative screening every year 100 percent. and i guess my question on the hsa is is that also applicable too because if you're used to it being free is it still going to be free and yes that is covered one person per year um if you notice, the Tier 4 drugs are no longer listed as your first option in our plan, but it does not mean we do not have access to the Tier 4 drugs. <laughs> you are just um, asked to try other avenues first, and then um, if those don't work, you can get them approved through the insurance company. Um, so that is a change from our old plan to our new plan. Um, I had a question about embedded and non-embedded plans. Uh, for the age, for, and this goes around for um, family plans because <laughs> sometimes you'll have a plan and your deductible for the family is say seven thousand versus a single will be thirty five hundred. So if if I'm the person that has huge medical bills, do I have to hit the seven thousand or the thirty five hundred? And it's the thirty five hundred. So the single applies to one person in the family, and then everything else kicks in. Some plans are not that way, but but this plan is covered. The one that, thing that I did notice um, is that when we went from the four-way offering, which would be single, family, employee, spouse, employee, child, to the two-way, which is just single and family, there's about, and, and I repunch the numbers uh, here, there's about a $15,000 savings to the county. And that fifteen thousand is shifted to the four people who use the uh, the family plan. Three. Three. And it will be three now. Yeah, and I used the old numbers because that's what you had. And technically, we only have three uh, employees that are going to be affected by it. So. And that's the family plan. That would be it's the family. People with young families. Yeah. Who kind of need the insurance. So, and where it goes Tough. is um, instead of six hundred and seventy-four dollars for a single, it goes to six seventy-three. Um, but whereas an employee spouse at thirteen sixty a month 
would go to 2027 a month and the employee with child would go from about 1260 to the 2026. So overall the whole plan is about the same cost, it's just where that money is being shifted if we go from the four way to the two way. Are we able to get some, maybe some type of family plan for those individuals and, that would be different? And I asked Julie that question if on, if these three families that are affected could go out to the marketplace and get a cheaper plan and they really can't and Julie you can come up here anytime I'm misspeaking or anything but it would be really challenging for them to go out to the marketplace and find something cheaper so you know at this point this is probably their option that they will carry forward but as we talk about changing from what we currently have to a couple other options um, those are the differences that I saw as I scanned through uh, the great amount of information that Julie provided. So I don't know if anybody else has any questions, anything else we don't have to, we're not making a decision tonight, but it is something to take into account when we decide. Um, she had starred two of the plans and, and I feel that that is a good recommendation for everything that is listed here uh, compared to where we were before. So the county is, oop, the percentage isn't on that one is looking at about a 7%, just under a 7% increase. Yeah. In, should, you bet. C come, come on up, up come introduce up. yourself. And it's a lot better than where you started. Right. <laughs> we all know you, but uh, state your name for okay. the record. Please. Julie Auk, and I'm currently your Walmart Blue Cross Blue Shield um, health insurance agent. The, the big thing, and nobody likes to see their, their policies, you know, we, we want to give the Yankton County employees um, and I've had the privilege of getting to know many of them over the last two years, the best health insurance we possibly can. But when you have a 21.93% increase, and, that, and that's just, I mean, and I honestly, I went back twice and said, please, you've got to help us get a better rate. And that's where we went from, I, I took every measure, that's where we went from the you had a you had a group that was one to um, one fifty to one hundred. We upped it to one hundred and one. We went back, re, did an employee recount, and then we also I said, how else can we save money? And that is going from the four tier to the two tier. So trimming it down, um, offering those two tiers versus the four tier in the in the price structure of the plan, saved the county a significant amount of dollars. So um, I think that it's something to seriously consider. I know we had to raise the deductible, but most of the larger groups are going this direction. This is still a stellar plan versus what's offered on the open market. So I, I don't like to see our families have to pay more. It's something we struggle with every day in my office, but it is kind of the reality of the times. Okay, any thank other you. questions? Is there anything else I can do? No, just thank you for all your work oh, you've my pleasure. done on behalf of the county employees. Thank you, Julie. So when do we have to make a decision on this? Next yes. meeting, yep, we need a decision at the next meeting. So, okay. you know, if we decided not to go with just the two-way option and we wanted to stay with the four-way option and not shift that 15,000 instead of 6.75, I'm guessing it's just under another 2%. So you're up around 8.5% instead of 6.75% increase over last year for cost to the county. So Which way are you leaning right now? If we, if Me? Yeah. I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. Okay. So I'm glad I have two more weeks to struggle with it. Can you give us a recommendation <laughs> since you're kind of a point on this? <laughs> well, the, the, the stars... <laughs> <laughs> the stars right here are, are the two plans. I think that HSAs in the long run are going to be the way that most employees mm. long term will think about their health care because it's, it's a semi-retirement plan if you stay healthy and don't use your insurance um, and you put money away. So I think by far this is where we need to go. I think the decision for me is do we go four-way or two-way? And. Uh, I'll say it again, I'm struggling with it, and, and I'll keep struggling with it for two weeks, but uh, I'll sleep on it okay. and figure it out. But right. um, I don't think Avera is even in the question. I think we need to stay with Wal Walmart. Okay. Anything else from any other commissioners? All right. Next, next meeting Thank it you. is.
Next item on the agenda, item number 16, planning and zoning administrator and secretary jobs descriptions. Uh, this is, uh, I guess I'll take point on this as something Joe and I were talking about. Uh, with the opening of uh, the zoning administrator, with that position uh, being open, I think this is an opportunity to maybe uh, you know, rethink how this position is, in my opinion. Uh, one thing I've seen research in other counties in, in the United States is uh, how important economic growth is to a county. And uh, my thought, and getting some inspiration from the city of Yankton, is they, it's, their office isn't just zoning, it's, it's economic development and zoning. And uh, we don't have to make a decision today on this, obviously, but. Uh, I, uh, with the help of District 3, we created this job description and um, want to hear the thoughts uh, of uh, people out there and, and the fellow commissioners. So I guess uh, anybody care to speak on this? Nancy? Welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy Winandi, my personal address of 1205 Peyton Lane, here representing Yankton Area Progressive Growth as their CEO. Um, I just wanted to thank you for creating a job description that is accurate to the job that is being accomplished. The previous planning and zoning administrator, um, from what I read, did everything that is currently listed in that job description. So as you're looking to hire a new person for that position, it's very clear what the expectation is for that role. Um, when we do some of the projects uh, that are involved, our, uh, that have involved our office, we went to Pat and got information from him. He helped us work through some of the challenges. Um, we projected some costs that would be for the county or what these pro or the prospect might have to incur for costs. So he was a great asset as we worked through a lot of those. So I appreciate you including that in the job description for whoever might fill that role next. Thank you. And, and for you, Nancy, too, uh, I think this is a, an opportunity where the county can work with the city and YAPG and the chamber, you know, for economic growth for our own community, just like we are doing now. So. Well, I feel that that's already happening. I don't yes. think you're creating a new job. Sure. I think that the um, previous zoning and administrator was already doing all of the things that were listed in there, and he worked well with the city and uh, with YAPG, and we were a really great team. So so I, I expect that the new person in that role will be able to do the same thing. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else care to speak on this topic? Going once. Dan. Oh, I'd just like to well, say. I'm going to. Okay. 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 Uh, for public comment. Anybody else going once, going twice? All right. Go ahead, Gary. Um, I think it's, it's a good idea what you're doing to get somebody dedicated to this because uh, I took it on my own last year to go up to Minneapolis twice um, trying to uh, entice some businesses to move down to Yankton. Uh, this, the last time I spent three days up there and some of the places I had contacted prior, some of them I walked into. Um, I remember the one, the one guy I walked into uh, introduced myself and said where I was from and, and, uh, and he, most, most of them were really receptive about it and I said, uh, this guy says, well, what, why would I want to move from Minneapolis to Yankton, South Dakota? He said, give me one good reason. I said, no state income tax. Mm -hmm. and, and he kind of looked back and, and, he, and I said, I'll give you two. I said, we have an oasis here. He said, what do you mean an oasis? I said, we've, we've got a lake, uh, we've got boating, we've got camping, uh, fishing. Uh, and, and he goes, well, South Dakota is a landlocked state. And I said, and one of the other employees said, yeah, I've been to Yankton. He said, it's great out there. He says, it's, uh, it's fantastic. So I did entice a few people, uh, uh, but had, I, had somebody been dedicated, like you said, to have a job description that could go there with all, all, the, all the numbers and say, hey, you can come here and we have this kind of area for you and maybe a building already made for you. So I think it's a good idea what, what you've done to change the job description. Thanks, Gary. Don, you got anything? This, if you got some changes you'd like to see, I guess uh, let us know. I'd like to see uh, continuation of working with YEPG. Uh, Would agree. Uh, it, uh, 
they're the ones that have the real resources mm -hmm. to get out the contacts and, mm -hmm. and, the, and to work with the state. It's very important that we work I would with agree. the state. I would uh, agree. And uh, yeah, I, I, I went through this uh, a couple times. And, has to be a pretty good guy. <laughs> well, good person. Kind of you, guy. A lot of you know, a lot of these things I think are already happening, and yeah. you know, this is our ideal person, and uh, well, I guess we have a unique opportunity where you know we can make the position, you know, you know, uh, be described more accurately to what's actually happening. So. I, I think uh, Pat uh, was extremely busy uh, doing. Lots of economic development, planning, mm -hmm. zoning projects, sure, meshed together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think uh, when you look, when we look for someone in here, we have to be particularly attentive to the economic development because I think it, it's an easy thing mm -hmm. to put that aside. Yeah. It may not be the what most popular thing. The city may not want to bring in uh, a nationality work group. Uh, mm -hmm. Those kind of things, and you know, it, it takes certain skills to be able to uh, manage your way through that successfully. Sure. And uh, I think with Joe and I's discussion that we've had is, I think this, you know, we have a job description for the uh, the head honcho, but I, I really feel the you know the other position, such as the secretary. We probably need to change that because the reality is people aren't really just secretaries anymore. They do so much more than answering phones and memos. I, I really envision it being almost a deputy or a second in charge, uh, somebody that can fill in when need be. And uh, I don't know if we will get the type of person we need if unless we have a more accurate description of what we expect them to be doing in that office. Well, Part of, I guess, why I started conversations with this um, it was exactly what we've been talking about. But I was concerned that we're advertising for positions that um, may not be accurate to what what is being done today and what we expect out of this person and what we've got several positions within the county right now. Um, you know, there's two in the planning and zoning, three in the planning and zoning office. We're discussing an HR person. Um, there's been talk in the past of a county manager, which would, you know, kind of fit into this realm. Um, there's uh, some spots at the highway department that um, mm -hmm. are open right now. And I just thought it's a perfect opportunity for us to really step back and take a look and say, okay, is this what, is this what we want? You know, we've, we've got these positions budgeted for if we were to reorganize or, or look at an org chart is this how if we were to start over is this where we would end up and I think having these discussions um, and creating accurate descriptions so we can advertise and get the right people in is, is important um, it's you know going to be another you know hopefully by next meeting we can come up with something and, and get it out there but um, we need to get some of these positions filled, and uh, mm -hmm. I would much rather take two more weeks and get them filled with the people we want than, than uh, just fill a position to get it filled. And I had discussions similar with Sherry on, on just with our open positions right now. What, mm -hmm. what does the county look like? Yep. What are your Agreed. thoughts, Sherry? Agreed. Brilliant. Everybody spoke so eloquently. I don't know if I can add anything to it. There was one bullet point that I do have some modifications sure. on, and I don't know if you want those now, if you want uh, me to. Yeah, what, what, which one is that? Um, it was under other requirements, and I think it's number six if I, and how it reads now is the ability to give full considerations to all aspects of a project, including protection of the environment. And I, I believe that this maybe fits it a little better, and, and it would be the ability to give balanced considerations <coughs> to proposed projects, including the financial, environmental, and health impacts to our entire community. And I think that that forces them not to just look at one thing, but every, every decision we make is, is, is a sphere, if yes. you will. That's how we should look at it. So. 
And I, I would really like, you know, this individual, if we find him, to, you know, be able to, just like you said, identify both the positives of a potential pro project, but also, hey, we might need to consider this as well, um, just like yep. you said. So I, I would be in, in favor of uh, that. And uh, I guess, uh, do you want me to write up the deputy I mean, do we envision the other one as a like a deputy as opposed to a secretary or yeah, how I, do we want to word I think the position like is not simply mm -hmm. answering the phone I, I yeah. see the second position as being the person who is doing a lot more of the paperwork and mm -hmm. such so your your person in charge can can step back a minute and really look at look at things from a higher perspective mm -hmm. so those two working together, I feel, could do a, a great number of things for our county. So it, it's not going to be someone who takes dictation and and uh, sends out letters. Sure. It'll be that, and you know, really being able to understand the zoning ordinances and a answer mm -hmm. questions when people come in. Um, so that that's going to take a a, a little beefier uh, job description, I think. Do you right. kind of right. like mirror this one maybe with some changes or do you have anything you'd like to see that's not on here or? Uh, well, and I think that where you start from this, mm -hmm. if you want to use this as a basis, as you start taking away the, you know, the, I don't want to say the flowery stuff, sure. but, you know, the bigger picture things and then sure. kind of filter what's left. And then you're going to have to okay. add some of those other day-to-day uh, okay. -day things in there as well. Yeah, and I had some notes and I forgot them at home, but it, it was some of the, the duties I in this job description I would probably... For the secret for the secret uh, for well, the in deputy. The, in the, this economic, <coughs> excuse me, um, development position um, that I would probably put onto, I would pull out of this and put into the deputy, deputy position. More of the, you know, the actual uh, permitting for 90% of what goes through that office, I would see the deputy handling, and I would see this position as, um, you know, larger, larger picture things, and I would see this position working with, um, you know, working, kind of back to all, somewhat of a county manager, but um, working with the department heads, working especially with the highway department, and alleviating some sure. of Mike's stress um, and job duty. Sure. And, you know, helping out with five-year plans, 20-year plans, looking down the road, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I see this as being a, you know, a big, big picture position, um, and the deputy handling more of the day-to-day -day things. Okay. Yeah, I, don't I know. think eventually too, you're going to have to look at all departments. Yep. yep. Not just those that you mentioned, because to get with the time, you know, things change, and each office evolves. I think you're going to have to do it for everyone. Yep. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. Yeah. Come, come on up, Nancy. So I've not heard any mention of the code enforcement position that you, I believe, have the authority to hire. Is that underneath this position? Because it wasn't listed from an oversight in that and how you're going to actually structure those job duties as well. I hadn't seen a job description. But as you're talking about you know, someone who's doing economic development and planning and zoning and then someone who's code enforcement, then how does that also fit in with the other administrative work that needs to be done? And I didn't know if code enforcement was a full-time job in and of itself or that could take on some of the planning and zoning responsibilities. And I also, um, from talking about the deputy position, I don't know if by having that title, if they have the ability to sign different documents or what exactly that creates other than administrative. But I know that you also want to keep in mind if there is any type of marketing or anything else that needs to be done um, through that office. Your administrative person would be taking care of that, and that also is very time consuming. So just as you're thinking about the time that people have to allocate to their jobs, um, that's something that just don't minimize the time it takes to do all the public notices and everything. Thank you. No, oh, that's a good comment. And yeah, I, that's good, good definitely. Point. Uh, I've thought about it, and I don't have the right answer. Yeah. Um, I don't see. I believe there is 
you know, they never had time to get a job for the court enforcement. Oh, so that's not actually created? they just approved it. Okay. Okay. Right, it was approved and it was never um, published or, or opened up. And well, there is no descri uh, job description. Right. Um, to, to start with, I, I, I was on the mindset that the code enforcer would, at the beginning, would be handled by the deputy mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, go from there. I and think that's what we saw with yeah. Sure. We've got um, a lot of changes just in, to think about it and, and mm -hmm. potential with HR services and some of that. And so mm -hmm. I'd like to get some get that office going as soon as we can and, and get going in the right direction but also kind of pump the brakes while we're doing it too sure. and I think it's it's extremely important to get the right person with the right characteristics in that position and you know instead of just hiring somebody to get them in there so uh, you know we have to can balance the, both of them we need somebody in there sure um, but, so do you want to you guys want to send me your your comments and what you'd like to see and uh, you you wanted to change with this which I'm fine if you have changes to the the uh, job description we have here and then I'll get something for the deputy and put it together and for the next meeting is that what you guys so if you could email it to me and I'll, I'll take point on that unless you want to do it Joe I no, could give you, you more can. stuff okay no, um, I'll send you my notes so on it. So please and, do, uh, and Don, if you got some suggestions, I'd uh, like to hear them, and Gary as well. Do you have any other suggestions, Don, or with shifting positions around, do you see anything well, else I, that I, would work? I, th I think what we saw mm -hmm. was a huge need was for somebody to go out and, and, and check on code enforcement to see okay. that the steps that were being put in place mm -hmm. to monitor were actually being completed. Okay. And that built in we thought integrity in the process and uh, trust with the uh, sure the public do you see that as a full-time position I mean no we saw it we I think I think they would all say that we were thinking more in line with that being part of the deputy mm -hmm. okay. job he'd learn basics and then be sure ready. Now, do you do you envision, I guess, that office long term having three people? I, I think we have to uh, have to stay flexible. Sure, uh, I would agree. On what's happening in the economy, mm -hmm. uh, if uh, if we solve all our road problems, we probably don't need twenty people on the highway department. Maybe we could get by with sixteen. Sure, sure. Uh, and I think we have to spread our resources around mm -hmm. rather than hiring new positions. Agree. I agree. Yep. Um, who, you know, historically Pat has gone to the drainage meetings, the uh, planning and zoning meetings. Who, of these two positions, who, who would? Well, I think it should be maybe some of each. I mean, if it's a true deputy, they should be taking on, you know, some of those roles as well, I would think. I, I I think so. I mean, I, I just see them being more involved in the uh, 90 90 percent of the CUPs that come through, mm -hmm. and so you sure. know I would see them handle it from building permit CUP sure. down to the meeting. But I'm just curious what other people think. Or you know, I think we're also making efforts to maybe streamline those processes a little bit. Right. They've been a little cumbersome. Mm -hmm. uh, we seem to give a large amount of variances and such which definition of variance you should not give very many out um, and then we're talking about the drainage as well trying to set up a special meeting to um, really look at our ordinance and see if we're really following it or if we're making a little more work than we need to so some of those areas I think maybe we can try to streamline the process with maybe some more electronic recording of things um, well, even yeah, even this rural addressing that I don't know how much time that took, but if we can have, you know, have somebody else do that for us to free free that 
frees up even more time. I don't know what it took, but it did take some time, mm -hmm. obviously. So, like you said, streamlining processes. So, yes. I, I just wanted to interject something. Um, mm -hmm. You were talking about code enforcement and everything, and the, the deputies take care of that. Uh, this is something that probably none of you know. Mm -hmm. uh, back when I was in the sheriff's department, there was a constable, mm -hmm. and uh, he, I, I rode with him a lot of times, and he would go out, serve papers, uh, uh, do like, kind of like odd jobs and mm -hmm. stuff, not what the deputies would do. Well, later on, uh, they actually encompassed mm -hmm. that. Sheriff Hunoff uh, created a, a full-time deputy out of that, but mm -hmm. it was kind of a unique position because he would go out and, and he had all the authority of a deputy, but he would specifically go out and, and enforce mm -hmm. uh, uh, codes and mm -hmm. just a little bit of everything. Pick up uh, something that was supposed to be uh, confiscated or whatever. Could he enforce road uh, <laughs> yeah, weight and, limits? Yeah, and when you were talking about road enforcement, I, I just want to interject yeah. there no, was a person that's like that. In, that's time. interesting, yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, so I guess uh, if you email me your suggestions for this, please. I'll, I'll try to get something together in the next uh, week, get it to you and have you in time to review it and then we'll hopefully approve it uh, these two at the next meeting and we can start advertising get those positions filled anything else from anybody on this sure. all right nope. moving on next item on the agenda item number 17 strategic planning the last meeting i asked everybody to bring in their top five things that they would like to see accomplished this year um and uh we uh greg wanted to get those uh and we we're gonna do some type of meeting to help us prioritize. I see so many uh, trains coming at us from one direction. I think we really need a uh, solid plan and we need to pick maybe a top 10 or top seven that we really wanna see and, and get a plan on how to reach that. So I actually have a top six with, when you mentioned the handbook, I put that on there too, but I have a top five. So I guess if you wanna hand them to me, I, I can, uh, did you get, ugh, that doesn't count. Uh, and if there's anything else somebody would like to discuss on uh, with strategic planning, uh, we can we could do that for I suppose a few minutes. But I um, I think we should uh, get these lists uh, to Mr. Henderson, and he was going to kind of help us uh, create a plan for that. So, do you guys have your list? You can, uh, can I can I email it to you? No. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Okay. Or how about you guys just email me your list? Am, am I the only one who did the homework? <laughs> Jeez. Did the teacher leave already? Um, but, uh, you know, some, some of the top, you know, five things I have is road prioritizations. Um, you know, some, something with the, uh, the Article 25 with the, the Internet. You know, some, some of those types of things that I think we need to look at. And your lists are going to be your lists. Um, and so, yeah, appreciate if you email it to me. We have anything else for strategic planning anybody would like to discuss? Do we have a, a meeting date in mind for that? No, I was going to uh, bring the list to uh, Greg, and he was going to kind of compile it, because we might have 25 different things, and obviously we're not going to come. Well, we're going to do way more than that. But uh, we're probably going to just prioritize to a top list, and he was going to help me uh, to do that, and then we will schedule a meeting after that. So gotcha. This is the first step. All right, so we'll move on. Next time on the agenda, Town hall meetings, uh, item number 18. So, uh, you and I got to get together. Yeah, I, I actually, uh, if we want to schedule one, uh, I kind of tentatively had one scheduled uh, for your approval uh, in Utica, and we could do it on April 11th if that's something that you would want to do. I believe it's a Thursday. I was thinking either, either April 11th or Saturday, April 13th. And I don't know if you had a preference for that, Don. You're thinking evening? Uh, I was thinking, uh, yeah, probably evening, like a, I don't know, six or seven. I don't know what your thoughts are. The 11th are. doesn't work for me. I've got a governor's economic development conference in Sioux Falls. Okay. Um, the 20th, or the what? what you okay, say? I was thinking 11th or 13th of the 13th ones. 13th of work. Okay, I have to verify uh, that I missed a call today that we can get the hall in Utica, but uh, I guess we could try April 13th then at probably like, I don't know, six or seven. 
do you have a preference, Don? No, whatever. Okay, and we'll advertise uh, in Utica and, uh, for a town hall meeting. Is that fine with everybody? It's fine. Okay, so that's tentative, tentatively scheduled for April 13th in Utica at uh, Rube Hall, and I will get with you, Don, and uh, we'll make sure we advertise. Yes? Um, do you have a time so I, I can put it in the middle? Um, April 13th, uh, 6 or 7, Don? Probably 7 for the seven. farmers, I think. Okay, yeah, I think that'd be good. And we'll um, town hall meeting, discuss, you know, flooding and anything else that comes ahead of us. So, uh, uh, I guess this is kind of on town hall, but uh, Joe, Commissioner Healy and I went out to Odessa Township on Sunday. It was a really great crowd. It was 30, 40 people came, and uh, we had some really great conversations out there and uh, met a lot of great people out there. So it was a... I think it was a pretty good experience. Uh, what do you think, Joe? Good. Yeah, I think yeah, it, it was good. overall good. Um, good discussions, and, and uh, mm -hmm. I think certainly it's important to make a presence yep. in uh, in every township and every mm -hmm. part of our county. Yep. I was actually also at uh, uh, this could I guess probably go to commissioner updates. I went to the Gay Gayville uh, city meeting last night, and uh, with the uh, um, Jay Jorgensen and Nick Huber and Monty Tisland and uh, Sue Fields and it was a really great experience uh, helped them they have for those of you who don't know have some uh, lagoon issues with some burned up pumps and they're kind of struggling out there as well offered them the assistance of the the county and uh, they were very thankful that uh, we, we were there so. What was the Odessa meeting? Sunday at four o'clock. Last Sunday? Yes. And then uh, Gayville was last night at six o'clock at the Gayville Community Center. Anything else for town hall? All right, moving on. Commissioner updates. I kind of did that already. Anything, Gary? You'd like to update? Uh, not right at this moment. Don. Sure, and I went to the eight county meeting. Uh, well, how was up that? At, uh, the ball and uh, Viberg, I guess. Viberg, it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was good. Uh, it was. Probably the best one I've been at. Uh, everybody had some problems and challenges, and, and wanted to talk. And uh, uh, we talked about some doing things uh, uh, jointly between counties, and uh, there was really some pretty good uh, discussion there on mm -hmm. wanting to share expenses, share that's good great capacity news. to do things. It's great news. I kind of updated everybody on, I guess I do have one thing tomorrow. I'm meeting with uh, Trans Canada, New Star Energy, and uh, the Natural Gas to go over uh, a disaster uh, planning. That's going to be tomorrow uh, at 11. Other than that, I think I briefed everything. Sherry, did you have any updates you'd like to? April 13th. Uh, they are having an event at the 4-H grounds starting at 5 p.m., so I don't know if now that I just notice that if you want to think about adjusting but it is they have a speaker coming in and and they're educating folks on agri agriculture in the community so that starts at five o'clock with uh, food I think and yeah, I better, uh, I better you, change that because uh, <laughs> I'm change. cooking so oh, I was oh, gonna oh, say oh, you oh, you oh, put that on your calendar well, Don but uh, Don, I did want to mention that. I those are the two dates I had I don't have another uh, I guess I'll have to get uh, email you and uh, yeah okay and uh, is it okay with the rest of the commission if Don and I put a date together yeah, yeah outside yeah, it's good. whatever somewhere? works for you okay uh, so we'll do that and I actually I can't honestly tell you when that's going to be right now so uh, uh, yeah. to tell you what uh, go back to Thursday and, and try that if you can the 11th I'll, I'll just leave Sioux Falls early okay I will uh, yeah Thursday I think I, I can get the hall for sure at yeah. seven. Okay. Yeah. So April eleventh. That's fine with you, Don. Yep. Okay. So we'll change that to April eleventh. Uh, Joe, did you got any, have anything for updates? Uh, the meeting was held yesterday. I was going to tell you I was going to move to Alaska, but I missed April Fool's Day, oh. so I'm back. <laughs> Catch any fish. Uh, no, we thought about it. No. Drink a beer and talk about it. I never got any t-shirts. Did you, Don? I didn't yeah, from Alaska? No. no. 
That's customary. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else you'd like to update us on? Dan, do you want some help tomorrow with that pipeline? Uh, yeah, if you want to come with me at uh, 11, you can. I'll come at 11. All right. Down, where are they going to meet? Uh, I'll get with you after this. It's, uh, it's uh, at the brewery, okay. I believe. I don't, I don't think it's a public meeting, but you can sure come if you want. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next time on the agenda, public comment. Somebody want to grab the sheet, please? Nobody listed. Anybody care to make a public comment? Now would be the time to do so. Come on up, state your name. I'll give you three minutes. Hello, I'm Patty Gramco. Um, you know, this roads and bridges thing is a nightmare on Elm Street. But I was just wondering, um, have you ever looked at what the other counties spend? I know we have the most bridges, I know, but it's just an idea to see if our budget is kind of what everybody else is doing. And then um, the other thing, so we got a big grant, if that's correct, to do the Johnson Bridge, but yet that bridge is on our top four to uh, replace. What did we spend all that money for? I know you guys are just listening. Could you explain that at a, could you put that on the agenda or something? Because if I'm wondering and people are asking me, there's more than just me. I'll, I'll just address it real quick if that's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, the, the Johnson Bridge, all the James River bridges, we've been told, have roughly 20-year lifespan. So we cannot feasibly replace, it'll be tough to replace four in 20 years, let alone all of them in year 20. And so um, that's part of where we're prioritizing which one, even though there may be some life left in something, we may have to replace it now as we save money for year 20. So Johnson Bridge may very well be replaced 20, 20 years from, from now. now. So that that preservation that was done on there um, will help get us to 20 years. And I just thought of one more thing. Go ahead. My, two, my two cents. Um, you know, I know the Fleegs Bridge is narrow. I drove over it plenty of times, um, crossed my fingers and everything. But the the stone church bridge that isn't even passable so that's my two cents thank you patty anyone else care to make a public comment go on once come on up chad please state your name where you're from for the record chad eilers utica 43581 um we're talking about roads and all that well, have you looked at new technologies? Poet is putting out a product, which is actually another term for corn syrup, and it's supposed to be a better deal or last longer with asphalt. So I'm just wondering, is that an option? Yeah, something we can surely look into. I, Thank I, you for that. I have inquired with uh, LTAP, South Dakota LTAP, and they've not re that I was supposed to talk to them at our commissioner deal in Pierre, and it got canceled. So it's on the it's on the plate to follow up on. So yes, there's another product out there from soybean oil too. So anyone else? Go on. Come on up, ma'am. Come state your name for us. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Mary Jo Bowder from Tyndall. I'm the newest commissioner at Bonham County. And I would just like to commend you for the terrific job you are doing here. Your professionalism I see as a board, your ability to communicate with each other, talk to each other. I'm very impressed. Keep it up, you set a terrific example. Thank you. Thank you very much. Last chance, public comment. Go once, go twice. All right, go ahead and close public comment. Next item on the agenda, executive session due to poor relief and litigation pursuant to South Dakota codified law, section 1-25-2, paragraph 3. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. second. Motion and a second. Further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. We are now in executive session.
Entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. We are now in regular session. We discussed uh, some poor relief issues and entertain a motion. I move to deny the poor relief assistance request from Avera per South Dakota codified law 28-13-1.3. And I second it. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Close. Yes. Swenson? Yes. Healy? Yes. Kettering? Yes. Clemens? Yes. Motion pass. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Or do, oh, items for next meeting. I, I apologize. No, that's okay. Yeah. Um, do we have any we items? Okay. We already wrote them down. Okay. We already wrote I them down. We, okay. um, Clark Engineering the bridge, bridges. I think that's two, That'll probably be two weeks meetings. Uh, I was going to have a, a planning and zoning uh, job descriptions. Rural addressing. Rural addressing. Yes. And what else was there? That will be there to the site insurance. Okay. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, we also have uh, the James River bridges, though. Clark Engineering won't be here, but. Oh, yeah, we have to. Are we going to make a decision on. Don't, are we going to do that? Or are we going to do that when they're here? I, we, we could. We just need, what I heard them say is they need an answer from us. We don't need them here. We right. Yeah, right. no, yeah. they don't need to be here. So we should. Yeah, I think we could do it. Okay. That's we we sure. said we did, and there's a lot of people that are waiting. Waiting, here. yeah. So I think we. And you, you just want it titled bridge prioritization. Decision or vote on bridge prioritization. James River prioritization. Yeah. Good. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion for the meeting to be adjourned. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion passed. Thank you, everybody, for attending.